Please be seated. Well, friends, I know you woke up this morning and you were like, oh my gosh, it's part two of the sermon series. <laughs> part two, I can't wait. And so here you are. The wait is now over. Now it's part two. Uh, we are focusing on this theme that's going to kick off all of 2023, but particularly this month as we focus on what does really stewardship mean to us, uh, which is generous hearts changing lives. Generous hearts changing lives. Uh, we can't change lives unless we have generous hearts. Uh, but we can't really have generous hearts until we understand the source of all the generosity. So last week, uh, we talked about the Magi, uh, the three Magi who came on the 12th day of Christmas that w when we, tradition, in our tradition, celebrated. And uh, they came and they, they offered themselves to worship lavish gifts, gold, frankincense, and very lavish. Uh, and they risked a lot. And so they were generous with their offering of their lives, really, crossing the desert in the middle, and for months and months with all of these uh, valuable items, um, risking their life in front of Herod, uh, and then kneeling before uh, this, this baby in a podunk town and just offering uh, their, their praise. Uh, there was a generosity that they gave because they saw this, this child, this baby, as a source. Um, and we don't know what happened to them scripturally, uh, but we do know they took a new way home. Well, that was the focus of last week, that, that our encounter with Jesus changes our direction. You, you, you leave a different way than you came in. Hopefully when you come to church, you leave different than how you came in. God started to just push, pull at your soul a little bit, whether it's through the Holy Sacrament, the praise, the music, the choir, the message, uh, you know, whatever it may be, <laughs> whatever it may be that might stir you, that's Jesus working on you, working on all of us. We're all disciples under construction. So what we want to focus on is that we, we, we got to understand the generosity of our God before we can think of ourselves as gener generous givers, whether it's to the church, to our family, to our friends, generosity of our time, generosity of our mercy, generosity of forgiveness. Jesus says, you need to forgive 70 times 7. <laughs> How are you going to practice that kind of generosity of forgiveness? Unless... You go to the source of all forgiveness, which is Jesus Christ, who gave his life for you. Uh, so uh, uh, John the Baptist understands the abundance of, of, God's, of, of God's gift to us. Because if you look at this passage today, um, that Jesus is, uh, John the Baptist, our, the, 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 uh, the prophet, he starts off by using, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, John, the writer, not John the Baptist, but John, the gospel writer, he, he, he introduces five different terms in this text. Just this short little, short little uh, uh, passage. He has people calling him rabbi, teacher, the anointed one. All these, all these terms that, that we could all use. Jesus is my teacher. You know, Jesus is my rabbi. Jesus is my priest. Uh, um, Jesus is the anointed one. Uh, but it's... John, who says, oh no, you're, you're being way too frugal <laughs> with, with Jesus, of who this person really is. This man is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he says it twice. He proclaims it, and then he says it again with his disciples, so they leave him and go follow Jesus. The Lamb of God, to any good Jew, they know exactly where he's going with this. First, they're going to go away to Exodus 12. You take the lamb, you kill the lamb, you put the blood on your post or doorpost, right? The great Passover to save your children. It would lead you to this idea that Jesus, that, that God saves and protects. He has abundance of protection over us, that we are chosen, and he will lead us out of the imprisonment of, of, of Egypt. And then he takes them into the desert. And what does he do? Does he just give them some crackers and some water and say, just duke it out for 40 days in the desert? No, he rains abundance on them. God is raining down meat upon them. He's producing manna, bread. He's taking water out of rocks. He abundantly cares for his children. There's no scarcity. We do not follow a God of scarcity. Therefore, we should not have scarcity-based ministry because then we're not listening to God who will provide everything that we need, not want. Good Jews listening to John the Baptist also would have heard, Lamb of God. Wait a minute. That's also Isaiah 53. The suffering servant. 
a passage that we always read. The suffering servant will come and he will be led to the slaughter like a lamb so the sins of the people will be forgiven. Our God could have showed up on earth in many different ways. He chose to come as a man. And he chose not to just give us some good advice and then leave. He chose not to just provide for us. Uh, they wanted him to rebuild a kingdom and be a king with, on, on a horse and take out all the enemies. And what he did is he gave something much greater. He went big. He gave his life the greatest generosity that we can practice. He gave his life, and why? So you and I don't sit around meddling in our sin and thinking that I'm less than, thinking that I'm just a bad product, that I'm just a, just, just a mammal trying to make it in this world. You have been forgiven of your sin, so stop the bad talk about yourself and get up and do something for God's kingdom. That's what Jesus did for us. He gave his life. So now we receive that generosity. And the key now I want to focus on today is do you trust that generous gift that God gives you? Do you trust God with your life? Because if you don't, that's okay. It's good to be honest about it. You have a lot of good company in the Bible. <laughs> the Israelites in the desert complained. They didn't trust. They wanted to go back. Go back to Egypt. I can get three meals and a cot and be imprisoned. At least I'm there getting, getting the food that I want. I'd rather be a prisoner than have to wait out here trying to walk to the promised land. So you're in good company. But if you read the Psalms like today, it's all about the psalmist trying to find trust with God. I want to trust you with my life because the psalmist many times throughout the Psalms is going through some rough patches. Whether it's King David or the Davidic writer, whoever it is, they're being pursued, they're being chased, they're being hunted by someone, and they are saying, my gosh, my, why are you doing this to me? I'm struggling, please help me. And he works through the whole psalm so he can get to that final couplet at the end of the, at, at the psalm that says, but I will trust you with my life. So if you are struggling to trust God with some part of your life right now, if you're struggling, like, say, God, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can trust you fully yet with my finances. I hold on to them, God, because I'm afraid of what's going to happen. I don't know if I trust you that with my relationships. I want to control them, God, because I'm not sure if I let go, I might get hurt. If you don't trust it with maybe some hurt or some pain inside your life and say, God, i got to control my darkness inside of my heart, my grief, my loss. Read the Psalms. Because you, that psalmist will grieve and mourn and kick and scream with you. And when you get through that part, then you can accept the hope of restoration and trust. Friends, that's why in the church we don't do celebrations of life at funerals. Because <laughs> you have to grieve. you got to mourn. you got to go through the darkness and be honest about that darkness. And then God will lead you through the cross to the resurrection. And then you find the hope and the glory and say, glory, hallelujah. So wherever your lack of trust is right now, just embrace and say, God, please come in, because I struggle giving this part of my life over to you. I'm not sure what will happen if I let go. I mean, when, I, when I first switched over and changed, well, I wouldn't say careers, but when I accepted the call to the priesthood, you know, it, was, it was glorious, it was awesome, it was fun, but there was, I, I thought I trusted God with the call. <laughs> And then when I switched over, it's like six years ago. Holy cow, does your, does your life change, man, when you, when you switch, when you, when you become a priest? <laughs> and, and it was just, I mean, the, 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 the administration, the office hours. I missed so much of my previous life. I missed the action. I missed hustling for the paycheck. I missed changing locations every five days. I missed the competition of having to beat out other people for jobs. I missed all of that. And so I was looking over my shoulder, and man, my anxiety was through the roof. It was through the roof. There was nights I, I couldn't sleep one night for three nights. I just couldn't sleep because I was just in my head so much wondering. And, and I knew the call was real. I knew there was a call. But I didn't trust God with, the, with it. And it took therapy because <laughs> good therapy will loosen up your heart so you can finally hear God's call really clearly. Your therapist is not God, but your therapist will help loosen up your heart and mind for you to hear God's truth and wisdom. And so I heard it, and finally it was God just saying, Christian, don't you trust me that I'm going to provide for you abundantly? 
got to let go. Let go. Yeah, you got to grieve and mourn and say goodbye to some other things. But I got something much bigger for you. If you just trust me, I will give it to you. When I finally got to that place, man, my, my, if my anxiety was at a nine, it dropped to a three. So much peace. I know you've been there before. There's so much peace that comes when you say, oh, God, this is where you have me. This is the place where you want me to be. I can let go and fall into your arms. It's like that with so many parts of our life, friends. And, 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 but, but if we don't trust God with our life, it's hard to let go. It's very hard to surrender. Do you trust the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world for you, to provide for you, to give you your food, to give you your, uh, your security, to give you your housing, to give you the money you need, to give you your loved ones, to give you your community? Do you trust him? Because we start there and we trust that God who provides for us generously, then we can give generously to others because we know who the source is. We know where it's all coming. Maureen talked about last week this idea of like, when you come up with a pledge number, you go somewhere where it's a little scary. Why? Because then you've got to trust God and say, God, I, I hear you calling me here, but whoo, that's scary. But I'm going to trust you that you provide and rearrange and do things in my life so I can go more completely and fully into your life. So friends, my prayer for you today is to really revel in the abundance and generosity that our God gives us. Nowhere in this, this book right here, this is the Bible. It's an Episcopal church with Bibles. Isn't that really cool? Okay. Because I love it when Jesus quotes the Book of Common Prayer. That was a joke, Susan. Okay. <laughs> if you can find any example in this, in this Bible that our God is frugal, Please tell me. I'll buy, you, I'll buy you dinner all week. If you can show me, ah, oh, Father Christian, there was an example here in 1 Samuel where God, he really wanted to do the BOGO. But I won't get one here. You know, he, he was really kind of a coupon kind of guy here, you know. You know, with, with Jacob, he didn't want him to have the full ladder, you know, of the stairway to heaven. You know, he just, just a couple, just a couple angels. Because God, you know, he really had to watch his resources. You know, no, when God provided for Abraham, he didn't give him a lot, just a little bit of land because, you know, we, we had not need enough to go around. And that guy, Jesus, remember Jesus? He had to turn away 4,500 people because they didn't have enough food for them. No, that's not our God. There is no example in the word of God, which is guides our life, that shows our God is a God of scarcity or a God of frugality. He is a God of abundance, a God of generosity. And he will provide and fully into our lives if we trust him and follow his mission. You can, you can pray all you want for an abundance of Louis Vuitton bags. You might not get it. You can pray all you want. You can. But when aligned with what God is doing in our lives for his mission, boy, whew, open up the floodgates. Because that's what the word of God shows. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so where do you not trust him fully? Where do you struggle and emotionally? Is it it's someplace? And, and if you struggle, you trust me, and, and, and I'll give you this one last piece of advice before I get out of here. Sometimes we project our relationship with our parents to our generous God. And many of us, if you had a complicated relationship with your parents, that gets projected onto our God. And so if you, that hits a chord, your prayer today is to say, God, thank you for my parents and for what they gave me, and also help me to trust you as my heavenly Father of everything you give me, because you care for my soul. You give me, you gave your son to save my life. You are crazy about me. You're in love with me. You pour generous love upon me, and you always care for me. Help me to see you, Lord, in everything that I do, and be aware of where I don't trust you. Help me see that. Help me to find clarity in that. So I can let go to your blessings, to your generous love, your generous mercy of hope, of peace, of purpose, of your mission. And then let's get to work and be generous givers in everything that we do as Christians. Because there's an abundance of it. There's an abundance of God's love to give away. There is no scarcity in God's kingdom. The God of abundance and a kingdom of abundance. Amen. Amen.